Hey, what's up, everybody? Hopefully, everybody's having a great day, and hopefully, we have a green week. All right. So, what I want to do today is kind of show more of a homework, homework style breakdown today. Okay. And what I want to do with this homework is I want to break down one specific sector. Now, I don't have all the tickers of the um, uh, this specific sector, which is the financials, uh, but definitely you know, totally up to you to go look for a lot of the financial tickers. All right. Now on Sundays or whatever day you guys do homework, which whether it can be Friday night, it can be Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning or Sunday night, or even Monday morning pre-market. I don't know when you do specifically your homework, uh, but for me, I usually start on Fridays and I go ahead into all the way into Sunday. And then Sunday, it's when I make my ultimate decision as to what I'm going to stick to um, for the rest of the week. And of course, you're going to have your daily um, daily watch list that you're going to be scrolling through and you're going to look for a good setup. And then on top of that, um, you might see it on Instagram somewhere where somebody's posting a ticker. So you go take a look at it or maybe somebody in your server, you know, posted a good call out and you wanted to just go see what's happening with that ticker. Therefore, you just add it to your watch list during that week. You know, there might be a bull flag somewhere, a pennant, a descending triangle, you know, maybe even intraday somebody is posting a pattern play, you know, there's maybe some news catalyst that comes out. So it all just changes during the week, you know, but ultimately what you want to do is you want to stick to something that makes sense. And, you know, if you don't trade full time, you know, there's no reason for you to, you know, um, stick to um, multiple tickers or, you know, be in the, in the, you have to know what's happening in the market. You know, you can just focus on a few things and you don't got to go out of your comfort zone. If you have a full time job, like let's say you just have that nine to five and you don't have time to check many tickers, you come and do your homework, you break something down, um, you stick to some discipline and some structure. And that's what's going to create um, consistency in your trading. And I'm not talking about consistency like full green trades, but I'm talking about the discipline and the structure that can create consistency. Therefore, you're successful in your trading journey, okay, no matter what it is. But if you're someone who works nine to five and you're consistently looking through multiple tickers on a daily basis, you're going you're gonna to not be as consistent as you, you should be. Why? Because first of all, you didn't focus on Sunday or Saturday or Friday to do your proper homework and to, tick and to stick to a few uh, tickers. Um, a few stocks. So, you know, this is going to depend on you, solely upon you. So again, um, I wanted to show you how I break down a specific sector and how this can make a big difference in your trading journey and how you can look for something that would make sense for you, okay? Now, the type of trading style would have to depend on you. You can look for a pattern. You can look for a dip buy. You can look for a breakout. You can look for a reversal in the market. Uh, you can look for a swing trade. Um, totally depends on what you want to look for as a trader. So with a few tickers in mind, I just wanted to break down the financials and give you an example of you know, what I'm going to look for and what the ticker in my eyes, in my point of view, has to offer for the type of trader that you are. Now, each one may be a little different. They all may be the same. Who knows? But we're just going to look at it. Um, so what I did is I went, uh, I went ahead and cleared all my tickers, uh, all the charts. So just so you can see here, um, there are no um, trend lines or anything, okay? So first of all is XLF. This is the ETF. So give you an example of what it is. It's almost as if you're looking at SPY. SPY is the S&P um, ETF 500 and it has 500 stocks right behind it. But just because it has 500 stocks, there's also sectors in between um, that you can break down on a separate basis. In this case, it's the XLF. We have the ETF. This is the financials, okay? Like I said, I don't have all of them, but definitely look for some that are more, um, uh, more well-known and more liquid. <clears throat> so with XLF, with the ETF, 
the ETF does not move as much, but let's go see what's really happening. On this four hour time frame, we see that it had a recent breakout and then now it's coming back down. What is the downtrend doing? Is it retesting? Is it creating a channel? Is it fully bearish? Is it something that has potential to reverse? That's what you got to ask yourself. Therefore, you look at your ticker. So look at this previous range, okay? From that 37 all the way down here. I mean, I can even say as 35, but the meat of the bone is right here. So I'm going to use 36, okay? So just so you can see and so we can understand what is truly happening with the specific stock. There's a recent, a recent high, a recent trend down, a push down, and then a recent sideways action. The sideways action created this nice uh, range break and then now currently retesting. And look what happened, the retest almost successful. So because we have a successful re retest, there's potential for this to keep on trending back up, okay? The only way that we can tell is if we have any type of pattern and let's look. There we go. We have a nice break of trend line that can potentially lead into more top, uh, upside movement. So over that 37.73, not to be exact, but around that level, we're going to probably continue to the top. And therefore, you look for, um, you know, the tops. Okay, you look for this this piece right here, 38.22. You look for this piece, 38.49. Then you come up here and you look for 38.92. That's how you would look. Why? Because the overall picture of this is a range breakout, a retest, and it confirmed. Now we're waiting for the break of that trend line to continue up. So if this is something you're looking for, this already gave you the confirmation. Now you're just going to look for something to break this trend line and continue to the top side, right? So that's the breakdown on XLF. Now let's go look at some of the ticker. Let's see if some of these have similar patterns or maybe something that can potentially give us a nice play. All right, so same thing here with BAC. It looks like we recently broke out of this nice range down here as well, here, and we trended up. We had a nice staircase pattern, as you can see. Here's your bottom, here's your bottom, there's another bottom, and then this is where we kind of just stopped and we trended all the way down. So you see like this nice healthy staircase pattern to the top, and then you see this nice um, staircase to the bottom, which that's what we do here. Okay, we're looking for a ticker. We're looking for why it stalled, uh, why it stopped, and it looks like it found support at this 3980. Okay, so now we know that there's a support. So we look for 3980. We, we set an alert. As you can see, mine's already set, and then my top alerts are already set. So what do we look for here? All right, we're going to do the same thing we did with uh, XLF. We're going to draw this nice trend line. Okay, nice trend line, and we're going to wait for the break of that. Okay, so basically, it had a nice uh, green day. And we do have that resistance at that 4044. And we want this to either break to the top of that trend line or get, uh, stay inside here and get a little tighter on this little base here and then continue to break down whichever, which, uh, whichever way you may want to go. But this is what you would look for. Your first target would be up here, 4120, 4150, and then you look for the top of 42. So this can be a nice channel break too or a nice drop to the bottom. And that bottom is going to be down here. So you see how we quickly just identified um, the type of pattern or type of play that you can uh, enter if that were to happen. So it's a small ticker and definitely um, big enough for any account size, small accounts preferred, um, bigger accounts. I mean, you can just go heavy on this and make a few bucks. All right, so let's look at JPM. <clears throat> JPM has been trading sideways for such a long time and it looks like we're rejecting from the top. Okay, now let me show you the sideways action. Here we go, here we go. You see this nice little range inside here. How's it, here's that retest push up here where we failed, failed and we finally broke up, but we're back inside. So how do we split this? Okay, you can either leave it alone or split the difference between the bottom and the top. What I mean is that right here, we had a recent range, okay? Look where we're at again. We came inside, and as soon as we came inside, we came back up. So now it looks like we're trending back up. But like I said, with XLF, since we have that same trend line and they're all financials, we want to do this. So it's very simple. Again, it's almost like it almost looks like that BAC, but this is a little different. And I'm grabbing this piece here 
um, this 153 because the pre-market just jumped, snapped back inside and we opened at 153 and then we closed around uh, 154.20. So here on Friday, we had a nice green day. We are on a nice channel down and we're, um, we're reclaiming this range here. So in order to split it, we got to understand why. And this is where it recently broke from. Uh, we made a new high and then came back inside. So technically, JPM is not ready, fully ready to break out of this specific range from 158 and confirm to 160 and then 167. It just wants to stay sideways, and that's okay. Not a big deal. But again, we draw this trend line, and we're waiting for the break of 154 if you just wanted to take it for the day trade. All right, you can even wait for, yeah, uh, 154.89. You just want to grab that high and it's going to confirm that it's going to break on the trend. Now, if we come down here to 154 and we uh, bounce, it'll be the confirmation of this trend line. So again, we're not open pre-market yet. Um, this may change, but definitely over 155, I would feel more safer and comfortable taking it long. My first target would be 157.33, uh, 158, uh, 159, and then 162. So I'll look for that. Otherwise, uh, look for the downtrend uh, to continue at 153, okay? Um, so again, it just depends. You don't have to trade this just because it's still in that range and there's no proper um, setup for like a range break or anything like that. I mean, this thing can just trade sideways, right? All right, let's look at GS. Let's go see what's happening. All right, for this one, um, there's still a nice room uh, to continue down, but let's look. Look at this high. All right, want to take note of this, that 93.30 area, okay? The next low is about down here, which I'm grabbing the wicks, okay? GS is just like that. All right, so for this one, uh, we made a new high, and just like we said, that 93.50, uh, we'll just use 93.50. All right, you see that it retested and it made an all-time high at 418.62. It's coming down now, and it looks like it just slowed down right here and is trying to build a, a retest from this other high, okay? So if we build that nice retest and we can go a little sideways just a couple more days, then for sure we'll look for continuation to the top. Otherwise we have a nice drop into this like 87 and then 84, 85, and then 80 level. So all I did is just look at some of these highs right here and then come down here and then look at this little base. Okay, so this would be my, naturally the target 380 if we do continue below that 390 level. Uh, but again, we're gonna do the same thing as we did with XLF. We wanna draw that trend line and there you go. So in order for financials to continue, we wanna break over that high, that 396.48, okay? Once we break that, you wanna look for these tops. You wanna look for that 405, uh, 408, even 409, 402. 410 and then the all-time high so it because that's going to create a nice bullish movement it's going to create the perfect uh, retest with continuation and that's the type of play that you will look for for something like gs let's look at c um c again is, is one of those tickers that are very slow and it, i always feel like this one is way behind but it's definitely a good ticker to trade if you have a small account all right, <clears throat> so all I did was mark the base here, uh, where we where we kind of rallied from, where we stalled, where we rejected, rejected, and look where we're at again. We're on that same piece again, and it's almost like it, it's doing the same thing. So it looks like all financials are retesting something that they recently broke out from, okay? So this base here, I mean, you can draw it all the way down here too if you want, no big deal. All I did was grab the meat of the bone, um, so you can understand that that 97 level, yeah, let's just do 97. It's going to be a confirmation to the top, but it really tested that uh, 69. Sorry, 69. Yeah, 69 level, sorry guys. So 69 level. So it retested this piece, right? Broke out, came up here to the 7450, came down and tested 69. And then now what we're doing is we're trying to confirm to see if we can go to the top side again. You want to draw that trend line. It looks like this one's a little tighter, so I don't, I wouldn't highlight this trend line at all. I would just look at it more of a continuation. If it wants to break over that high, 
I definitely look for uh, 72. Like I said, it's not a big mover. It moves like 30 cents in a day or something, a dollar if we're lucky. Um, 71.50 to that 73.20. That was a green day. That was a nice um, trend to the top. Um, but we're going to see uh, if these are going to continue uh, to the top. As you can see, all of them are retest. All right. Look at this. They all have similar patterns, which is awesome. Okay. So this is what you're going to look for. Um, so WFC, Wells Fargo, um, it looks like it came back inside and it's testing from the bottom. So I think this would be more of the weaker uh, ticker out of all of them, just because the retest should have been up here at this 48 versus the bottom of it. It didn't hold anything up top. All right. So this is the weaker out of all of them. So if anything's going to be bearish, it's probably going to be WFC. Okay. Either way, set your alerts over that 48 for a safer entry. And we can definitely look for a long play to the top, okay? BRK is Berkshire. Berkshire looks like, again, like uh, it's, this one's a little more different, uh, but I do consider it um, in, in the financial sector just because it does handle a lot of financials. So I'm just adding this one as extra. Um, I like trading this every now and then. The, the, the movements can be pretty big and you can definitely have a wide spread, but it's um, very volatile. And if it doesn't go your way real fast, it'll it'll go against you. So just got to be careful on this one. But yeah, this one's just rejecting these all-time highs. So um, for, for something like this, all I do is simply keep my alerts up here and just kind of watch out for it. So out of all of them, this is probably like the weakest one that has no setup. That doesn't make sense um, for me, but it's definitely the same pattern, okay? I want to show you why. Look at this wick right here, okay? So we we're trading down at these levels for such a long time. And look where we kind of confirm. We're using the pre-market. The pre-market is what confirmed it and then brought it up. So definitely, again, all the financials in that sector have the same thing. And what is it? It's a recent break of and the retest of. Okay, so that's XLF, BAC. This is just trending down and is squeezing right here. So BAC has the better better pattern and setup out of all of them. JPM, same thing, retesting. GS, same thing, retesting. So GS and BAC are two of the better plays um, that you would choose from in order to trade you know, this specific sector and watch out for. WFC is below, so I would rate for confirmation over that 48. And then this BRK is really no actual setup. But what they're all doing is the retesting a recent breakout, okay? So that's how you would break down a sector and that's what you would look for because they all have similar patterns. The best one so far that we saw was BAC and GS. You have an option now because you're doing homework. You have an option to choose whether you wanna grab the smaller ticker or the bigger ticker. GS has wider spread. So would you rather go heavy on something like BAC and scale out of your position? Or would you rather go in light on GS that um, offers a lot of a bigger, more of a bigger movement and can offer you more profits, um, but you won't be able to scale out as comfortably as you would for BAC because BAC on, you know, like, let's just say a dollar move, you can trail it every like 50 cents or 30 cents for something like GS. You got to be a little more careful because the moves are more aggressive and the spreads are wider. So you're putting in more money, but yet with BAC, you're putting a decent amount of money that you can handle on an emotional level and be able to trade this based on your account size. So it would make more sense to go for something like BAC and add it to your list um, versus GS. Um, you know, again, depends on your account. So BAC has the better setup um, with GS. JPM is still sideways. C, there's not... Um, not much going on because we're technically still in this bottom range. Um, WFC 48 long, that's where I would confirm, but it's right below. So I don't really um, like the setup here. BRK spreads are too crazy. Um, they're too wide, more of a high risk, but um, that's the XLF um, breakdown, guys. Um, this is kind of what I do to uh, search out sectors and create a watch list. I'll go to each sector and, you know, kind of gauge in on what's what stands out the most and what fits my account size and what would make sense for the week because I'm not going to trade C, I'm not going to trade BRK. I would rather trade BAC and GS 
um, and stick to those two just so I can understand the movements of XLF, which is all financials. So that's kind of uh, me doing the homework and us breaking down the uh, financial sector. And I hope you guys can go do that. You know, go look at all sectors, even if you have to just look at the fangs, um, go look at retail, go look at solar, um, go look at uh, electric vehicles, you know, go look at all those things, combine them, grab those tickers, grab them in that they're in the same criteria. If it's retail, you know, like you're talking about food, then you want to look at Shaq and BYND uh, and then Chipotle. You know, if you're talking retail, like, um, you know, clothing, you want to talk about Walmart, um, you know, Target, you know, other more tickers are out there. If you want to look at something just like Uber and Lyft, all you want to do is compare them and, and grab that sentiment from each one and grab the best one that fits, uh, fits your trading style and has the best setup. So be aware of that. All right. So just a few tips and tricks on how to look for and uh, be ready for the week when you break down a sector. So more of an educational day today, guys, no specific levels for any of these. Uh, BAC is on the watch list, of course, um, that was breaking down earlier, um, but totally up to you guys um, to check out this type of content. Um, so yeah, um, like and subscribe to Conservative Collectors, guys. Let us know what you think. You know, let us know in the comments down below if this was uh, helpful to you guys. And hopefully this helps you guys understand more of what the sector breakdowns uh, look like. So uh, yeah, uh, stay green guys and good luck on your journeys.